my channel where I will be reviewing a sample of issue ones that have come out this week. I've really struggled this week because there was not that many issue ones that came out but they all looked really good but one, only one from the place where I go to get the preview stuff to sample all over the screen so you get to see what the art looks like. Only one comic had it, so I started panicking. I've managed to find some, but obviously I've become extremely limited because obviously I've enjoyed some that don't have previews, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so let's see how this editing goes this week. But let's begin! Bit of an interesting one to start off this week. It's first debuted in Free Comic Book Day, and it's now its very own comic, which is Mercury Heat by Avatar Press. Mercury Heat introduces a sci-fi world in the future where everyone is pigeonholed and marked due to their personality traits and genetic markers. Anyone labelled a troublemaker ends up on Mercury. Louisa wanted to help people and she desperately wanted to be in the police, but the automated grapevine system had different plans for her. There are only a few legal options for someone branded with her neuro profile. As an adult, Louisa's dream came true, just on Mercury where she enforces the law with extreme prejudice. As a bounty agent in a world of hard as nailed people, miners and cyborgs. Pros! If you would never read the free comic book day of Mercury Heat, the free 11 pages is actually available on Comixology. But more to this actual comic that I've just read, it's really good. The story flows really, really well. It breaks into the pace from page one and you never get lost along the way. The story is action packed, wasting no time for her to get physical with anyone required. Not physical, you know, physical, not physical. <laughs> I really liked the detective element as well. In the first issue, she starts her first case on Mercury where she's investigating what first appeared, a non-suspicious accident that happened on Mercury, but she thinks there might be something to it. And I really like that. I always love shows like CSI and Murder, She Wrote and stuff like that. So I like that they have this non-action element to it. I like it. The art is clean, it's detailed, and it's quite fun. I really like it. It's just, it flows really well with the writing. I love it. Cons. My only real gripe with this comic is that the speech does appear a little bit forced at times. To get to a, a one line as she wants to finish with, sometimes the plot seems a little bit quickened or stretched out just to get what she wants to say. But overall, it's a good book. Book of Death, an issue one of a mini series of four issues by Valiant Entertainment. A lot of the beloved Valiant heroes, Bloodshot, Ninjak, the Harbinger Renegades, Unity, and many, many more are all in this comic together. But unfortunately, the book of the Geomancer has recorded how they're all going to die. And it can only be read by a little girl, the last in line of the enigmatic mystics here to protect the earth. Now alone with her one sworn protector, they have to fight friend and foe to save this world and the superheroes. Pros. It's written really, really well. For some reason, I was always put off by Valiant Comics, especially in my comic shop. They're usually the ones that end up in the bargain bin and stuff like that. So naturally you think they can't be that good. And it's kind of swayed me against them, even though I'm a massive independent comic lover, Valiant Comics have always been put away. But recently when I've been doing these reviews and I've been reading Valiant Comics, I really like them. It has a really great pace to it and gives a really true feeling that something epic is about to happen in this story. The art is beautiful. It's so rich in colour and detail yet again. I love it. They have a lot of uh, variant covers for this as well and some of them are just stunning. And even though it has a lot of established characters from Valiant, you can pick this up without knowing any of the characters and read it and understand it. It's really well done. Cons. My biggest gripe, adverts. Really annoyed me. Sorry. Da -da -da -da. A mini series consisting of six issues. My pick of the week this week, Deathhead by Dark Horse Comics. Zack and Nick Keller have both written this super creepy horror comic about a family and a creepy, terrifying murder. Niles and Justine Burton go on holiday together away from the kids just themselves camping and they discover a creepy abandoned village hiding in ancient evil. In a turn of events ripped straight out of a horror movie, a brutal killer wearing a plague's doctor's mask begins hunting Justine, Niles and their two kids. Bros! It was actually quite spooky and I read this during the day and I got goosebumps reading it and there were parts of it I didn't like and it because it was a little creepy and if it was a horror film I'd be screaming behind a pillow I think. <laughs> it actually evoked emotion off me. Sometimes I can really really like a comic but it doesn't actually get me to feel something towards it when this one did. I love horror films. I love horror. I don't know why 
I hate being scared. I can't sleep with the light off when I watch some horror films. And after Insidious, I couldn't walk past a mirror in the dark for about a year. But I love it. I don't know why. I'm weird. And I really liked this comic. It's got a great pace and I could see this being a film. And I would watch most of it through my fingers. <laughs> Cons. I'm really upset because like, I kind of didn't want there to be a con for this because I loved the story so much. I loved the concept and I flew through this comic like 10 minutes front to back, read, loved it. But the art got to me sometimes. When you are reading a comic book, because you can't hear how things are said, it's really important for the expressions to be detailed so you can understand the tone that people are meant to be saying things in. Sometimes, especially in the face, it was too blank. Maybe it, it was because they weren't important characters so it didn't really matter to the artist or to the writer or just whatever, but I didn't like it. I noticed it and it took me out sometimes and it reminded me that I was reading a comic, not being submerged into this world. So yeah, sometimes the art is a little bit too bland, but not all the time. Sometimes the art is really good as well, but sometimes too bland. Well, that was it for this week. Uh, still in my bedroom. I'm kind of liking this backdrop a little bit because I'm too lazy and I can't work on a good background in my office. When on Pixels and Pages I had the couch and the windowsill and all the toys. That was because I was filming at night but now because I've got to edit as well I want to get it done during the day and I'm just struggling. It's hard and I dyed my hair today and it's just so red right now <laughs> that I look really washed out so thank you for putting up with that too. Although I do look like Mary Jane again. But yeah thank you. Have you read any of these comics yet? Do any of them look good to you? Are there any comics I'm missing out on? I'm so upset because there was one called Godzilla in Hell that I was looking forward to. I really wanted to read that one. Couldn't get it in my comic store. So I'm probably gonna order it online and read it, but I'm just giving you a shout out. That looked awesome. Well, thank you for watching. If you liked it, please comment below. As always, I love talking about comics with people and I will see you next week. Oh yeah, and if you like the video, uh, please subscribe. Bye.